Hey guys, how's it going? It's 8-Bit Eric, and we are going to talk about The Last of Us Part 2. I just completed this game. I literally spent hours playing this game all weekend. Barely slept. Just ate, drank, slept, and Last of Us Part 2. All weekend, because I'm going to be honest, I was feeling the hype of Last of Us Part 2 ever since I completed Last of Us Remastered earlier this last week. I never played this series. It took me forever to finally get to this one. I did my review earlier this past week. If you missed the video, I'll leave a link in the description because I wanted to make sure I was ready in time for Last of Us Part 2. Now, I'm going to be honest right here. I was one of those few people that saw when the leaks for this game happened. I went out and read the leaks and was like, oh man, all these people talking about this game are in a huge uproar over certain stuff that was in the leaks. And I have to say, after completing this game, the leaks were, for the most part, spot on. However, there was so much more to this game than the leaks actually let on. The leaks would lead you to believe that certain things happen in the game and it's to the T, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and that's it. End of story. Go ahead and vote this down on Metacritic and be done with the game. Give it a, a unfair judgment because you haven't played the game for yourself to find out yet. So I'm going to try my best to uh, give my thoughts on Last of Us Part 2 in today's video. It might upset some of you guys because I know some of you guys are just really hell-bent and upset with what happens in the game. And full disclosure, full disclosure right now, there will be spoilers in this review. I'll be talking about some plot points, giving my thoughts about it, including the ending. Also, the footage I will be showing might show some situations, some scenarios, maybe some characters in the game that might slightly spoil things. So, you have been warned. If you continue this video right now, I'm going to give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. You've been warned. If you continue right now, it's your fault. So, in regards to the game links, uh, yeah, Abby, the character on the box, you play as Abby, almost probably a good chunk of the game. I'd probably say over half of the game, you play as Abby. You play from the perspective of her. And who is she? She's a new character, a female that's kind of real buff. There was some controversy online whether she was a transgendered person or anything like that. But I can confirm from playing this game, she is not a transgendered woman. She's actually a really buff soldier steroid chick. Like, like think of like Ronda Rousey on steroids. She's got good looking arms and everything. And yeah, her mission is to revenge her father being killed. So if you played Last of Us Remastered, the beginning of this game actually almost seamlessly takes place from it. It's like, it's like if you were watching The Walking Dead and you got a, you know, a, a new season coming from a shocking season finale. Uh, comes right off the beginning from it and it tells a story that Abby's father was the surgeon actually that Joel killed at the end of Last of Us. So she's out for blood. So the beginning of the game you you kind of catch up with Ellie and Joel and it starts off like in a nice little cozy village area kind of sets the mood up shows where she's been five years after Last of Us. Um, she's in a new relationship with a woman. Yes, it's there's some LGBTQ stuff in this game. That's another thing that the leaks touched on that for whatever reason a lot of people got mad at. I, I honestly don't see the big deal. I know in the, today's society a lot of people are like, oh, they're pushing some kind of SJW agenda. I gotta say, from my perspective, I really didn't see that in here. I didn't see any kind of like SJW Manhattan um, type of agenda on here. Actually, it was pretty clear cut all the way aboard across all the characters that everybody was just individually different. And that's honestly what the, I like the most about Last of Us Part 2 is that there's so many characters in this game with different backgrounds. It's like everybody had a role. Everybody in the cutscenes and everything 
really made you care about them. And, and there was a time where I really felt like I was forgetting that I was even playing a video game. I, it really felt like I was watching a movie. And not too many games can do that. Not too many games can capture my attention that much to where I'm just like, wow. It's very cinematic. Um, and the characters, the, the voice acting, spot on. And it really made you feel like, you know, every character mattered. And which is why when certain situations happen in this game that have you going from a perspective of Allie and Joel to the perspective of Abby and her family, it really tugs your strings emotionally. Uh, this game is like a, a Greek tragic almost where, uh, you know, there's two opposing factions and they kind of have a misunderstanding because of a situation where Joel didn't want to kill Ellie because he's he loves her like a daughter and Abby is pissed off that her father died because he was going to save the world with the cure and you know things lead to another sure she beats the crap out of him with some golf clubs and probably one of the most violent scenes of all time but you learn as the story progresses and you see her perspective where she was coming from and as she grows you see that she does have weaknesses she does have fears and she's a good person overall she she grows as an individual in this game and so does Allie you see Allie literally from a kid to a female grown adult to uh even segments with Abby being a kid to a full female grown adult and you see them grow and entangle into this world that has so much more behind it rather than just being a zombie apocalypse. And I'm not trying to get philosophical with the game, but wow. And, and to top it off, the reason why Last of Us Part 2 is so phenomenal in the regards to the story and the voice acting is the graphics are so absolutely unbelievable. Looking at the faces during the cutscenes, it's this is as real as it's gotten in video games so far. Naughty Dog and the people that program this game did a fantastic job with tracing the emotions, the details, the way that the movements of the mouths and the eyes, like holy cow, if they could do this on the PlayStation 4, I'm excited to see what they could do with the PlayStation 5. This game pushed the limits to the PS4. I think this is about as hard as the PS4 can work and I don't have a PS4 Pro. I play it on a PS4 vanilla, like a basic PS4 game. Uh, machine and boy did it sound like it was going to take off to outer space so they pushed the limits with this game i'm proud to say that the detail and the characters even just the atmosphere going along around the whole maps and the levels the assets the way that the buildings are decaying the dust the dirt the blood it just all looked so amazing i caught myself at times just getting views like there were so many areas in the maps where you could just kind of turn the camera and just look far into the distance and look at you know buildings or signs or billboards in the distance and holy cow beautiful like this is probably the best looking playstation 4 game out there period uh and and it just was a, a thing to look at and and i gotta commend naughty dog for doing that it's a shame that the leaks really overlooked all of that you know the, the the complaints and stuff that people have which it's fair you can have your opinion it's a shame that all the, the negative publicity from the leaks has overlooked at what's probably a fine piece of art now the sound so the it looks great it sounds great this game has uh, it's it's like you can hear stuff in the distance and tell where it's coming from it's almost like a realistic immersion as far as the sound goes like for example some enemies whistle or they yell or you can hear an enemy in the distance getting killed um it was just so realistic and immersive as far as the sound goes music was spot on too again it's like a movie there's time where the, the times where the music is just so ambient just feels really relaxing calming uh but then it just picks up when the action happens and, and you there's, there's several segments in this game where it's just incredibly challenging and difficult. You have infected coming out at all angles from you, chasing you, and the music just drives you nuts while you're shooting your gun and throwing your bombs around and stuff. Um, 
it was like no other experience. And this is coming from somebody who just barely played The Last of Us Remastered a week ago. So this is not some blind fanboy who's been in love with the game for over five years. This is somebody that was late to the party that decided to hop onto this train and also saw the leaks and discovered that maybe going ahead and just playing it for themselves is a lot better than just reading people's personal uh, opinions about it. Find out for yourself. But let me tell you, uh, the game mechanics play exactly like the original Last of Us. It works a lot on stealth mechanics. So um, you can go in gun blazing, but the best thing to do is to actually avoid altercations with certain enemies, craft your bombs, craft your traps, craft your sheaves, attack from behind, just like in the original. Because of course, you know, there's the clackers, the, the things that pick you up by sound. Uh, there's infected that run all over. You can throw bricks and bottles to cause distractions. There's also dogs that come and attack you. So there's a lot of different ways to approach a situation. And that also leads me to the level design in this game. I felt The Last of Us Remastered was a little too linear. I, I was hoping for a little bit more of an open experience that can uh, cause you to actually explore and look and stuff. And while there was a little bit of that, it, it just was not up to par for me. But I gotta say, Last of Us Part 2 took what was great about the first game and amplified it by 10. These areas are huge and they're much more wide open. You can go anywhere you want at any time, any branch and paths. There's buildings that have windows and doors open. You can literally take your time on a map and, and do like an hour or two going through every window, every nook and cranny, scavenging everything, running up on extra enemies that pop out of certain areas. Um, it just feels so much more bigger. It's almost like a much more open world game than the original one. I think they they knocked it out of the park. That was one of my biggest gripes with The Last of Us Remastered. And I gotta say, uh, just even going to the first part where you're like in Seattle and the world just suddenly opens up to you and you're on your horse and you could choose to go down this street and go into this coffee shop or you can go to the courthouse and figure out your own way of progressing in the story. It felt great. It felt so much more bigger. It was almost intimidating. I was like, wow, this is intimidating. There's zombies everywhere. There's people with guns and, and I just don't know what to do first. But eventually you start to gain your powers, your abilities, your skills. You level up your characters, you get your weapons and, and the combat is just amazing. It's a lot of fun doing the combat, picking up, you know, scrap pipes and hammers and pickaxes and setting up traps it's just as solid as ever if not better and i love it so in regards to the main core gameplay mechanics they really didn't change much but if it's not broken don't fix it right um if i was to do a big complaint a big complaint about this game is i would say honestly the story is not that bad it's just the way that they um the way that they tried to uh, make it work in this game wasn't just uh, executed right. Uh, it, it's, it's almost like they took a mishmash of two games. Like they wanted to make two different individual games. So a game with Ellie at the helm and a game with Abby at the helm. And just boom, mishmashed them together and made like a weird stew out of it. Because there's parts in this game where you're playing in a flashback for like two chapters. Two, three chapters that's like... And then it jumps ahead. So so one minute you'll be in present day. Then the next minute you're four years earlier. Then you're two years earlier. Then you're present day. Then you're four years earlier again. And it just kind of gets a little convoluted on time. But then on top of that, you're switching characters. So you might be Abby two years ago for one moment. Then you'll be Ellie uh, present time for a chapter. And then it goes back to Abby present time. And then Ellie four years ago. And it just gets a little kind of messy and mismatched and confusing. Um, I feel the story itself presented a lot of emotional growth, a lot of psychological, like um, individual, like like building up some serious characterization of these of these people and making you really care about them. But but to sit down and keep track of what's going on in a game so massive. Um, it gets a little confusing. It, it just, I feel, it, it just wasn't executed enough. Um, you know, a lot of people feel it was weird to be able to control a character that kills Joel, the main character from the original game, and, and have to 
play as her and proceed through the game. And a lot of people just had an issue with it. I feel if the story would have been um, executed a little bit more differently, even if it was to the point where maybe split up into two discs or split up with a DLC where the full first part of the game is Ellie's story and everything like that. And then the second half of the game is with Abby. And then maybe later on it mis matches together uh you know keep the flashbacks separately and and then go to present time together i have no idea how they could have funneled it um but that was my biggest chief complaint about the game um other than that holy cow um this definitely has to be the best game i've played so far in 2020 uh i just i don't even know where to begin here now as far as length of game there's a lot of options here depending on what difficulty you have. I played moderate, which is right in the middle, but you can go anywhere from very easy to very hard. And depending on that is just how long your game is. Mine, I'd probably say I, I spent about 30 hours in on moderate mode. Uh, the challenge was definitely there though. Uh, there were segments of this game where I was like, holy cow, how the hell do I get past this? For example, there's a part where you're stuck in an area and a car is blocking the door or you're, the doors are blocked and you have like no ammo and you're surrounded. It's like a real small building and there's like slits in the walls where you have to go through and avoid and these bloaters are there and it's just like so many monsters everywhere and you have to wait for the two characters, uh, Yara and the other one, to open the door for you so you can escape. Uh, just holy moly. Um... Yeah, I, very challenging. And there's times where I, I gotta admit, I lowered the difficulty down a notch just so I can get past by certain areas. Uh, but I gotta say, what a fantastic game. Um, if they're gonna remaster this for the PS5, I'm all game for that. Or if there's an additional DLC, um, it's just gonna be really interesting with the way the ending of this game uh, went. Uh, it left a very open cliffhanger i would say in regards to both characters abby and um ally um where things can go uh very deep actually and, and very sad too it's like almost a bittersweet ending uh where where it was just kind of it made you feel empty and uh it's gonna be interesting to see where they go with it so i gotta say honestly the best game i've played so far in 2020 um uh, I'm not going to say it's a perfect 10 out of 10. That's just hyperbole. But <laughs> hyperbole, exaggerated-wise, best game I've played in 2020. Uh, much better than the original. I, I was let down. People overhyped the original to me. And I was like, really? I don't know. To me, this didn't scream a game of the year. But to me, all leaks aside, all sjw controversy and all the mismatch and metacritic reviews aside this is the best game i've played all the year so it's a must buy even if you haven't played the first one and i don't even think i don't even think it's necessary to play this play it it's a good game just not a game of the year game of the year anyways guys that's it for today's video i really appreciate y'all watching this thanks a lot um i'm real i like oh my god i could talk about this forever but i don't want i don't want to keep you here much longer um let me know your thoughts in the comments down below do you, do you did you like this game did you actually play it or are you just going by what you saw and you don't want to play it because of what you read uh comment down below um go ahead and help push this video out for me leave a like a dislike subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you guys on the next one have a great day. Peace out. Consider supporting 8-Bit Eric on Patreon for just a dollar a month. Link below in the description. You want to become part of the hashtag 8BE Nation, guys? Well, be sure to pick up your official merch now available online. Link is below in the description. We got classic t-shirts, tank tops, hoodies, and even women's apparel. Don't forget, pick up your official merch now. And while you're at it, guys, feel free to watch the next video. Or why don't you catch up on one that you might have previously missed. Thanks again, guys, for all the support. I couldn't do this without you. You guys are amazing. And don't forget to subscribe and click that like button if you are brand new. Thanks again, guys. Peace out.